Okay, so I want you to imagine a, a young child who's been told he has a heart murmur, and, uh, but he's doing okay. He goes his whole life knowing that his heart needs to be fixed. Finally, at the age of 45, he's put his life savings and gone to what he thinks is the best surgeon to get his heart fixed. It's done, he has great outcomes, and he goes home. Six, six months later, he's back in the ICU with a stroke, now permanently disabled. And my initial reaction was all, this needed, all that needed to happen after you went home was you had to take this one medication and manage it right. Why did you lose sight of that? You know, I was almost mad. I'm the ICU doctor saying, this was so easy. And then I realized that this guy had no idea as to what he was supposed to do because he was so excited. His heart had been fixed. He didn't think he needed to do anything at all. And what had happened is all, everything that the doctor was saying uh, he was, all he was listening is, I'm fixed. So he had just completely dropped the ball on this medication. For me, it, the eye-opening moment was, uh, at that point, was that when you are communicating with people, it's not what you're saying, but it's what they're listening that matters. And it's probably more important in my world than in most. So we started out as purely an educational mission, saying we're going to create materials that patients can understand. And so we made books, we made pictures, and we started testing them. And we realized that when people like you and I design stuff, people who are not literate, who don't live in our worlds, don't understand that material. So we had a whole picture of foods that were supposed to be avoided, and it said, do not eat. And we showed them around, and the patient said, oh, great, these are the foods I'm supposed to be eating regularly, right? Because he can't read. He's just seeing the pictures. So we draw a line, on a red circle with a line across on the top. And he says, oh, that's a nice wheel but these are the foods I'm supposed to eat. And so we go on through this iterative process and finally realize that the best way to communicate with these folks is in media they understand. We ended up, to make a long story short, this is work in India. India Indians, if you know anything about them, they love soap operas. And so we ended up shooting a soap opera about post-operative care using television actors. And it's, it's hugely successful. Um, for me, the idea, that, the lesson that I learned from this process, and of course we've now expanded into a mobile-based system to expand access to post-operative care, is that when you engage with people, uh, you, ha with your you have to engage with your stakeholders, but it has to be iterative, it has to be constant, because the assumptions that we make as experts are frequently erroneous in the field, and that goes back to what Scott was saying earlier, engage early, engage often, and approach with humility.